is Nicole Whitney, News for the Soul, life-changing talk radio from the uplifting to the unexplained. It's a great honor to have you on the show. News for the Soul is now in its 25th year of broadcasting. Tune in live or visit the archives at newsforthesoul.com. That's newsforthesoul.com. Previously aired broadcasts of News for the Soul online at newsforthesoul.com. Now let's get back to the show. And we're live. Happy Saturday. It's time first for the incredible articulations of consciousness concepts, awakening divine connections with David and Deborah Shea. Let's bring them on to reintroduce themselves, their show, and what's up for today. Welcome back, guys. Good morning. This is David. And this is Deborah. And we are so glad you're part of the program today. Well, today's program is titled, Do What You Know Until You Know What to Do. And this is something that uh, Deborah and I We follow our own advice on this, and she's going to tell you more about that. During these turbulent and unpredictable times, doing what you know until you know what to do can help us keep our life happier and calmer. And trust me, it really can. And it allows us to more safely navigate life's seas of change. I mean, look at the world right now. It's in a kind of a tumultuous place, you know, all the things going on. And it's good to have a way of handling that. And just join us now for this practical and exciting program. Our quote is, have you ever noticed that the challenges in life always seem to catch us at our blind spot, our Achilles heel? Well, before we get into the program itself, as always, we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming announcements. That way we don't have to do them at the end of the program where it might be get cramped for time. We have two things coming up. We have a Zoom Shea Spiritual Insights. Now, I do these every month, typically um, on the first Friday of the month, and I'm going to be doing that in November. It'll be November 4th. And this is where our spiritual group, those who have been with us for years and years and years, and, and people such as yourself can call in and or, or Zoom dial in. You can call in or use the Zoom on your video. Anyway, it allows you to, to people to share what's happening in their life spiritually They can ask each other questions, and then sometimes they ask me questions, and then we share that with the group. And everyone really, really benefits when this happens. And so I encourage you to to do that. Again, it's November 4th. It starts at 7 p.m. Mountain time goes usually an hour-ish. If we need to go longer, people have things that we need to talk about, we're going to do it. We're just going to stay on, and we'll talk about it. And... We also have a Zoom sound shower. Deborah is going to be doing another one on Wednesday, November 9th, from 7 to 9 p.m. Mountain. And again, that's ish because she sometimes goes long. These things go. People ask questions. They have experiences. And these sound showers are incredibly powerful, and that will be part of next month's programming. But I won't be a spoiler and, and, and t- take Deborah's thunder on that. She's going to talk about that at the end of the program. But... You can find out both of those things a couple of different ways. One, you can go to Shays Holistics, which is S H A Y S H O L I S T I C S dot com. Shaysholistics dot com. You can go to our spiritual services page for more information. But we also have links to both Shay Spiritual Insights, so you can just copy that link and go right into the Friday night thing on November 4th. Uh, and we also have one for the sound shower, so you can do it that way. Or you can sign up on our, um, get a free gift, sign up, be aware of what's going on, and uh, get things via email. Whichever way you want to do it is fine, but those are the two events coming up. Deborah, do you have anything more to share on that? Not right now. All right. Well, with that, before we begin, as we always do, it's so important that we just kind of uncouple from our our regular outer lives and get ready so that we can really benefit maximum from what's going to happen in this program. So with that, 
find yourself, if you're not already in one, find yourself a comfortable position. Give you a moment to do that. Now close your eyes. And take a deep air breath in and hold it and let it out with a sigh. Feel the relaxation flowing through your body. Release all the cares, all the outer concerns, the news of the day, the bills the upcoming appointments, whatever it might be that's on your mind, just let it fall away and feel that sense of peace and calm permeate your body. Again, take another deep breath in and hold it. Then let it out with a sigh. Feel more of that stress just flow away. Feel the warmth, love, and calm that's flowing into your life right now, even if we don't know it. Just let that penetrate your body. Give you soothing relaxation. Once more, inhale deeply and hold your breath. And when you are ready, let it out with a sigh. Feel the blood flowing through the capillaries, throughout your body, into your skin, filling you with warmth, calmness, and peace. Now go ahead and set your intentions for what you would like to receive during this program. Some people visualize, and that's very powerful, NASA and professional athletes, including Olympic athletes, use this method along kind of a little more complex, but they use this method to visualize what it is, doing it the perfect way, the outcome. And as you do that, feel it. Feel it as if, as if excuse me, it is in your life already. As if you, whatever it is that you're seeking to have happen during this program that you've already got it. Feel it, see it, but if you're one of those people who isn't very visual or very emotional or intuitive, you just don't operate that way, just intend it. Intention alone will make it happen. Now I'll be silent for 20, 25 seconds here to give you a chance to go ahead and visualize what you would like to receive during this program. Okay, when you are ready, bring yourself back to this place, ready to receive and be open to all that your higher guidance has for you, and if we're listening, they will provide us so much guidance. And with that, I'm going to hand you over to Deborah here, who's going to present today's topic, and it's kind of exciting, I think, because it not only one of those things we talk about, it's one of the things that Deborah and I both practice. We believe in practicing what we uh, preach, so to speak. Anyway, here's Deborah. Without further ado. Thank you, David. And again, welcome to the Divine Awakening and Divine Connections show today. And what we're talking about today is do what you know until you know what to do. So I'm going to re re read the quote, have you ever noticed that, challenge is, that challenges in life always seem to catch us at our blind spot, our Achilles heel? So many years ago, David and I, we lived in southern Spain. And we were there because we were both in the Navy and we were stationed there. But what we really loved about it is it was a beautiful place. We lived in near a small town of Rhoda in the Andalusian province. And the people there were just beautiful, wonderful, warm people. And it was really about family and connection and a slower pace of life. 
and it was one of my favorite duty stations when um, during the time I was in the Navy. And the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning this is because at that time, we knew a traditional Christian man who was always grounded in his approach to both worldly and spiritual matters. He wasn't the type of person to lose his cool or go off on some tangent when life's challenges arrived. When he faced adversity or when he wasn't really entirely clear on what, what direction to go, he would say, do what you know until you know what to do. And we're going to talk about that and what that means. But this person, this man that we knew, followed his own advice, and he did it exactly, rain or shine, no matter what, he did that exact thing. He always waited until he got the guidance or knew what to do. So let's talk about the Achilles heel a minute. Have you ever noticed that challenges in life always seem to catch us at our blind spot? or our Achilles heel, the things that we don't know about ourselves. And David's going to talk about that a little bit later in depth about what this really means. But often this makes sense because if we could see a different difficulty coming, most of us would take care of the situation before it became a problem. If we knew what was coming, we could make the right decision. But a lot of times and most of the times in our lives, We don't have that option. We don't know what's coming for us, and we have to make decisions based on what we know right now. And sometimes it's better to just wait instead of jumping in and making a decision. So speaking of situations, as we watch the behaviors of those in society and the greater world right now, our old friend's approach seems to be particularly pointed. Because there's just so much tumult going on, so many things are changing in the world so rapidly, it might be prudent for us to just sit tight and, tight and wait for things to unfold before we jump in to making a life-changing decision in our life. With that said, most people everywhere are ready to move on with things. I know David and I are. We um, are feeling the energies are moving and changing and our life's direction is changing. But we're going to just take our own advice and wait and see what we're being guided to do. We're not making any rash decisions because we need to let the universe and the events that are on the earth that are happening right now, they need to unfold before we can make a really good decision. So with that, they, we are leaving behind the problems, undesired situations, and basically all that is unpleasant in their lives, fervently and impulsively moving toward something better, even if they don't know what that is. And let's talk about impulsively for a minute here. Impulsive, we are very impulsive people, and we are um, result-oriented people. We want action right now. We want a resolution to our problems right now. And because of that, we sometimes don't make good decisions because we are impulsive. We tend to not want to wait. We are impatient. And sometimes we need to be patient so that we can make the best decision based on all the information we have. So let's talk about solutions and how they present themselves. Our friend's approach approach to life situations is a reminder that if we wait patiently and don't act impulsively upon our current frustrations, in time, a solution will present itself. It may not be the solution we had envisioned, but it will be far better than the unwelcomed condition we may be currently facing. In the absence of sufficient patience, when we are in the midst of some life change or turmoil, it is natural to want to take action to find an immediate solution to alleviate the stress. Now let's talk about spontaneous decisions here. However, if we act hastily and without allowing the universe and divine to show us better alternatives, that inevitably are out there 
and waiting for us to discover them, we may find ourselves wishing we hadn't made such a spontaneous decision. And I'm going to use one of our um, family members, extended family members. They were unhappy with their job and their living situation in Washington. And they decided they wanted to be closer to their brothers and sisters in elsewhere. elsewhere. Yeah. And so they decided to move. They had a really good paying job, and they wanted to um, move because they were unhappy with where, where they were. Well, they moved to this new location, which was pretty far away, and they weren't there more than three or four months, and they realized they didn't like the place they were. They didn't like their job. They didn't like anything. And then they decided to pack everything back up again and move back to where they came from. For them, it probably would have been best if they would have stayed where they were to begin with because they had a family support there. They had a job. They had friends. They had everything they needed. But moving to this new place, they had no support, nothing. So sometimes it's best to not make a decision right away. That's one thing. The other thing about this spontaneous decision is we have a saying that no matter where you go, there you are. You know, when you, you have all these situations that you're facing in the current situation, place that you're living, or whatever it is, and if you just up and move, all of those problems and situations usually follow you because it's not about the place, it's not about the job, it's not about the people, it's about you. It's about what's going on inside of us, what's happening emotionally and spiritually. It's an indication that things are coming up that need to be resolved. And if we move to try and get away from it, it's going to follow us because it's part of us. It's who we are. So sometimes it's best to just stay where we are and deal with the, with the issues. And in time, when the issues are resolved and let go of, then we know, ooh, now I can go do this thing because it's the right time. So let's talk about impatience and missed opportunities. How many times have we made an immediate purchase for a new electronic device, an appliance, a car, even a new house, because we had grown fed up with the old one? Then later, a better deal, a newer model, or our dream home suddenly became available only to find that we were no longer in a position to take advantage of it. And that happens quite frequently. David and I, we're, we're um, in the market to buy a new camper. And if I had my way, I'd have it right now. But um, we lost our camper last year. Uh, we thought we were doing a really good thing, and we replaced the roof. And when David was working on it and trying to replace the roof, realized that there was some structural damage to the camper and that we wouldn't be able to use it anymore. So we had to pretty much junk it. And now we have no camper. And the impatient person that I am <laughs> wants to have a camper right now because I love camping and I miss camping. But my higher guidance and the divine are saying, just wait. And the right opportunity, the right camper will present itself. So that's what I'm doing. But it's not an easy process. Sometimes it can be really challenging to be patient and to wait. But that's what sometimes we really need to do. So now let's talk about higher guidance solutions. Similarly, perhaps we have had a falling out with a friend or a relative over some disagreement. If we wait, remain open, and allow our higher guidance to show us insights about our part of the disagreement, a heartfelt solution can be found. The healing path to repair the, wound, the wounded relationship then becomes obvious and usually in a much more uplifting way than if we try to force a reconciliation or that we, we speak before we think kind of thing. We open our mouth and put our foot in it. We become trying to defend our honor, defend ourselves without thinking about what we're saying. And sometimes 
we regret what we say, so sometimes it's better to not say anything and just to allow the situation to unfold and for for time to cool off and to just seek that guidance for the higher guidance to show you how to do the reconciliation without trying to make it happen. No matter what the challenge, whether it's a daunting illness, an unexpected financial strain, or anything in between, whenever it is possible to wait for the unfoldment of time, better solutions will always make themselves known. So let's talk about immediate actions versus waiting. Now, some situations may require immediate action, such as an allergic reaction to a bee sting or other time-critical predicament. In those cases, it is important for us to take helpful, corrective steps right then and there. So what we do is, you know, if we're not sure if it's an immediate thing that needs to happen right away, we consult our higher, our higher guidance. We kind of tune in and feel, does this feel lighter or does it feel heavier? Do I get this flip-flop going on in my stomach? Do I feel like, oh, if I make that decision, um, I get this uneasy feeling. So you've got to figure out and, and be in tune with your body and, and knowing what um, to do for yourself and be connected to the guidance, to your guides, so that you know um, what the right decisions are and when to make those decisions. Still, the less critical decisions and situations may be best served if we allow sufficient time after the fact for the universe and our higher guidance to show us the higher pathways just waiting for us around the bend in our life. In our lives, David and I have been reminded of this time and time again. It is during those times that we think of our old friend's maxim, do what you know until you are shown what to do. And again, I like our little saying as well, wherever you go, that's where you are. So if you're facing situations and challenges in your life, just moving to a new place or getting a new thing or whatever it is is not going to resolve or fix that problem usually. It's, it's an inner thing that needs to be dealt with. We need to look at and resolve and let go of. So now I'm going to pass this off to David, and he's going to talk a few minutes about the um, Achilles heel and Jahari's windows and how that relates to our topic today. So here is David. Thank you, Deborah. Um, I really do feel like this is a good add-on for, the, um, for, for our topic today because this little model, and many of you may have heard of it because it is used all over the place. It's called Jahari's windows, sometimes Jahari windows, I think. Um, a little bit about it, okay, is it one of those psychological models, and a lot of them, you know, these psychological models, they're great for a particular thing in counseling, or you might use it in, in, in psychiatry, or they might use it somewhere else, but it has a very limited scope. Jahari's Windows is not that way. It is used all over the place. It's used in counseling. It's used in, um, in, in psych, psychoanalysis. In, in, the, in those kind of disciplines. It's used in marketing, business marketing. When I went to college, my degree at the time was, was in computer information systems with a business major, and I had to take business classes. And I'm taking marketing class, and they're talking about Chahari's windows for marketing. I said, oh, wow, this is really weird. And, and, of course, it's also used in regular business and other places. It's just, again, used all over the place. And just a little bit of background about it. It was developed a long time ago by a psychoanalyst, uh, psychologist Joseph Luft and Harry Ingram um, in 1955 at the University of California in Berkeley, UC Berkeley. Anyway, and that's just a little bit about it. The name came from a hyphenated uh, a hyphenation of their two names. He had Joseph and Harry, so they had Johari's window. So that's a little clever name. Um, and if you know about this, um, please bear with me, but it really is good to know when we're trying to figure out what we, you know, to figure out to do what we know until we know what to do. Now, this model has four quadrants in it. Imagine a box, and the box has you know, a little crisscross across in the middle of it, and it has four quadrants. The upper left is um, the things we know about ourselves 
that others also know. We're going to start there. So in the upper left-hand corner, we have that box. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it now. Um, in this window pane, most of what is discussed is seen through the common lens. These are things everyone in the conversation sees the information and in insights a similar way, although not exactly the same. So um, we, are, we know something about ourselves. And this is more than just like I know my name and you know my name. Or uh, it's the things about us. We know that our favorite color is maybe yellow. And someone else, our friends know that. Um, they know, we know how we react to certain sort of stressful situations. And our friends know that. So these are things that we both know about us. We know and others know, and, and, and depending whether it's friends or casual observers, coworkers, whatever it is. So if we have a situation coming up in our life that's in this little quadrant, the beauty of it is that um, we, we can, we, it's in the area of the known. We know and others know, and we can figure out what to do. It's pretty straightforward. You know, the dishes are stacking up. I know what to do. That's not a crisis or we uh, need to move because we have, you know, the, the rental on our apartment is done, we have to move to another place, it's not a, really even a, a decision. We, we know we have to go do that. So that's one quadrant. Um, and while we're at it, um, I'm going to kind of jump in here between the four windows to give people a chance to call in if they're sitting on the line. So, Nicole, is there anyone waiting? Hi, everyone on the lines is just listening and enjoying the show. Well, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm getting into that a little bit. So this quadrant is probably the most boring quadrant. It's the things we know and others know. So, um, but it's important to keep that in mind because that it's in, it's in the realm of where everyone sees the light, and even though people may see things slightly different, see, differently, knowing the same information, generally we all agreement on what we need to do. So that's not an issue. As we move into quadrant two, things begin to change a little bit. Now, I'm not trying to go into a long, you know, um, what is it, the university lecture kind of a thing here. I'm trying to keep it so that just informational and so the things that we can use, because if you think of things in this way, sometimes we realize there's some solutions out there that we didn't know about that we weren't pursuing. And the second window are things that others know about us that we are not aware of. Okay. In spiritual terms, information in this window sometimes comes through in a way that doesn't make sense to us. It can be things that our friends, family, or higher guidance tell us. Now, as most of you know who listen to the program, when we say higher guidance, that's our guides, our high self, the angels, archangels, whoever we have as spiritual guides that we may talk to in meditation, prayer, deep reflection, however it is we do it, that's how we, we have a connection with them. Okay, so with, with our higher guidance, although we can hear their words, we may not understand the intended meaning or we may feel that it doesn't apply to us at the moment. How many times have we heard our guides say something? It's like, what does that have to do with my question? Well, we, in, in reality, we're the ones who don't understand. So they know something about us that we don't know. We're blind to some aspect of something happening in our life. Uh, over the years, it has become apparent that much of the key learning in most people's lives happens at their Achilles heel or their blind spot, and this is one of our blind spots right here. So, um, so as this happens, I, I look at it when I first was out of the Navy. I was used to being very, very busy, and um, my guide, his name was William at the time. He's, he's, he's now moved on to doing other things with others. But anyway, William said, uh, I, I was really frustrated. I said, what am I going to do about this job? I just, I need, you know, something to do. And, you know, um, and I just can't keep doing, you know, these little projects and stuff. And he knew that about me. And he knew that something was coming up. And I found this out months later. Anyway, he said, and, and I like this about William. William was such a practical guy. It was like, he was like, a human being without a body. He understood and under at the time and still to this day understands what it's like living on planet Earth and all the forces that we face. Anyway, he said, I, won't, I wouldn't spend my wheels worrying about it. And I thought, wow, for whatever reason, those words, and that's almost a quote, were exactly what I needed to hear at that moment. And I said, okay, I'll give it a rest. Interestingly, 
and this goes into knowing, doing what you know until you know what to do. I just continued doing things the way I was doing them. And three or four months later, I got a phone call from some lady on the phone, and she said, um, listen, is that you, are you David? And I said, yes. And he says, oh, you're the one with the resume out there? I said, sure, yeah. That's, and I was in IT at the time, and, he, and she said, well, can we use your resume to uh, bid for a job? And they were bidding for some government contract. Anyway, I said, sure. Three months later, I had a job. It was out of state, but it was just a real great job. Uh, it, it was fulfilling, paid well. I really enjoyed it, and it gave me the time I needed to figure out what I wanted to do. So, again, as Deborah says, we take our own advice in this. So that's window two, um, things that others know about us that we are not aware of. And I mean by others, it can be our friends, family, coworkers. It can also be our guides who generally have a pretty comprehensive understanding about us, even though... They don't know everything, and I will talk about that in just a minute. Um, Nicole, is there anyone waiting? Okay, yep, I'm going to go ahead. Um, sorry, yes, we, the callers are, are just listening. Still, we have a couple emails, but I can save them for after the next section. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. I'll do the next one, and then I would love to hear the emails. Okay, okay. wonderful. Okay, Windows 3. Things we know about ourselves that others are not aware of. And this is the window that in our life of trying to do what we know until we know what to do um, can, can get us in a little bit of trouble. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. I say in, in, in my post that I had some time ago, I said, these are the secrets we keep. But it's not just secrets. The, there may be very good reasons that we keep them to ourselves, these, the things that we don't share with others. We may not share with coworkers the details about our spiritual life. They just may not be in the place to do it. You know, if you're an auto mechanic who works with others who are not spiritually oriented, although many auto mechanics are, um, you just you don't talk about it. You know, whatever it is your job, if they're not spiritual in nature, you may not. That is an example of where we wouldn't share it. This is often prudent, as they may not be interested in the subject or ready to discuss the topic with sincerity. And you know what that's like. We all have experienced it where we're sincerely sharing something with somebody, things that we know about ourselves that they don't know, and we'd like to get their input on it. We'd like to share that with them so that we could maybe further evaluate the situation in our life, only to have them jokingly or sometimes even, although they're our friends, they mock us because they, they, they think we're kidding them and only to find out later that we're being sincere. So there's that old biblical saying, don't throw a pearls to swines. And it's not to say that our friends are swine. It's just to say don't share information for those people who aren't ready to, to hear it, that they're not ready or in a place to understand it. So we, we do this basically by keeping unwanted information away from others for both positive and productive reasons and negative and unproductive, unproductive reasons alike. Because if they were aware of it, the nature of the relationship could change uh, into something not desired. So we're, we hold back information from others that, for a number of reasons, because we were afraid it would affect the relationship. The unfortunate pro pro part about this is if we're facing some situation in our life where we could really use the input of others, and perhaps our guides are being kind of uh, quiet, quiescent, as I sometimes use the word, um, about things, we are actually kind of, we have to really evaluate that is this something we can do? Find the right person, find the right venue, find the right situation where you can share this piece of information that we know about ourselves that others don't know because it could be the key piece that will give you or give us the information we need to um, figure out what the next step is. So this is one of the areas that can become problematic and uh, we talk about it. And with that, I'm going to find out if Nicole could go ahead and read the first email. Did you hear uh, Nicole? Well, I yeah, want to. I'm finally here. Go Sorry, ahead. I'm having trouble with right. the on the switchboard today. <laughs> I was psychically screaming, "I'm coming!" All right, so uh, <laughs> we were just re re uh, checking in with the callers, and they are indeed listening, but loving the show still. Uh, Michelle in New York. 
she is having trouble manifesting money and prosperity and abundance the way she used to and she's trying to tune into what's going on you mentioned you know um your approach today with the topic and she's wondering how she can apply that to abundance and prosperity michelle in new york oh thank you well michelle i'm glad you you wrote in there's a couple things you need to know um why the prosperity isn't happening and it has to be and this is happening with so many people out there and it's happening with the soul group i mean that's the whole world we're all going through a change and our individual lives kind of parallel that and what it looks like i'm seeing with you they're showing me that's a more accurate statement that your higher guidance is showing me uh, is that you have some we call it emotional baggage it's, it's just buried stuff beliefs situations and things of the past sometimes past lives for those who believe in them and we do but not everyone does that need to come up they're coming up so they can be released and I think you're beginning to sense them um, you can feel the this this uh, I, I'll call it energy or this emotion in, in the quiet moments that's coming up just be aware not to, to try to stuff that back down but to let it come up and to release it because it's the thing that is inhibiting you and it has to do with situations in a lot in, in, in I'm going to say a past life but it, I think also in, during childhood to where situations came up that per, that inhibited you from doing what you wanted to do and and part of this belief is is that I can't uh, the, the subconscious has a belief that it's unable to have the things that it wants um, and so you had this level of manifestation, and you're ready to move to the next one, but this is the thing blocking it. That is, um, this is the waiting until you, to, uh, doing what you know until you know what to do. The thing to do at this point is to let that come up. Now that you're aware of it and we've talked about it, awareness alone will allow that non-conscious part of our being to touch it and start fostering it coming up. And just know as the emotions that can come up, inevitably that come up with that, um, with those old beliefs of being released, sometimes it gets processed through our energy field, as I like we, we talk about it. You'll feel the energies and emotions associated with it. Just know that's of the past. That's not who you are. That's not the situation now. That is what once was. There's nothing wrong. You're, you know, sometimes we question ourselves, am I okay? Yes, you're just fine. This is actually a very healthy thing. Let it go. And as you do, in fact, you won't even have to be completely gone as, as it's, pretty much all released, new situations are going to be coming around the corner in your life. And it looks like time is a hard thing to read on the inner level. You know, and I'd say you're going to start seeing, as you, if you let this stuff, as you let this stuff go in the next month to three months, you're going to start seeing things happening. You're going to st- and then when they do, as my higher guidance once told me, and I, I can share this another time, but it, it may seem different. It may seem unusual. It may seem a little odd, even if it's something you normally do. What your higher guidance is saying, say yes to things that you would normally say no to. Say yes. It's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Say yes. There's no harm. You can always change your mind. That's one of the reasons why that's, it's being blocked, that belief. And the new different things are coming, and um, it's really in your highest good to be open to them. Um, so that's my long answer to your short question. I hope it helps. Deborah, do you have anything to add? No, I don't. All right. Well, thank you, Nicole. Is there another one? There is, and I was ready this time. Colleen in California. She's been told she has to move and feels like she should be moving maybe further than she originally planned. Are you able to give her any intuitive guidance on that or tell her how she can tune in to get answers instead of being in her mind? Okay, I can give you two answers, and I think Deborah has something to share, too. Okay. Um, well, what she has actually, she's got, she's, she's right there. She's one of the, she has, give me a second. I'm looking at them. They're showing them to me. Okay. She's got three paths coming up for her. Interesting. With a fourth possibility, but I think the fourth is really not one that she really will look at. The one is, yes, she's looking that she has to go further and it has to do with, um, that, how do I say it has to do with, Doing that process, of, if she were to actually, you know, take up on that and move, uh, it would end up being put her in a situation where she has to um, 
let go of some stuff that she's in the process of letting go right now. There are two other options that, that can come up for her that she's not really considering. I don't even know that she sees them. So I would encourage her to look at all the different things that, are, that come up. Um, but ultimately, um, what we can do, in, if, if you have a situation where she must move, and it looks like it's, it's I think it's pretty eminent in the next few months she has to be, it's prudent to be moving, is to start moving in her direction but be open to other possibilities because the minute you show movement, the universe says, oh, she's made a decision. Okay. And then other things come up. And they may, again, oftentimes in life they seem odd. That gets like, that. I don't think that's what I should do. Explore things that you would normally say no to. That must be the theme of the day. Um, and look at them. And when you do, you may find the thing that looks like the absolutely, like, I don't want to do it, could, may turn out to be, hey, wow, what a gem this is of an opportunity. And I would have said no to it had I not explored it. And that's what her higher guidance wants her to do because she, and she knows this about herself, Colleen does, you tend to and have most of your life spent, you've gotten yourself, you have, and this is human nature, we get ourselves into habituations, we get ourselves into patterns, and we don't even see them anymore. And this part of what this is about is to break the patterns and to do something new. And that's why make a decision, even if it's the one moving further away, start moving in that direction, look into it, and then as other things come up, um, opportunities can present themselves that she hadn't considered. And the last one, if she wants to know, if she doesn't hear her guidance, I have on shazolistics.com, S-H-A-Y-S-H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C-S.com, under our articles, our last articles, is finding out our life purpose or what it is we're supposed to do uh, for those who don't get stuff intuitively. It's using looking at the patterns and the events in her life, and it shows you how to do it. It's kind of a methodical thing, but I think Colleen would be good at this. Um, and you can just use your kind of a left-brain approach, but it actually works to figure out what to do. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a handy thing, but I don't usually recommend it unless someone really is kind of tuned to it, but I think, Colleen, it might work for you. So, again, a long explanation to your short question, but I sure hope it helps. Is there anything else, Nicole? And I'll, if not, I'll continue. We do have another one uh, that just came in from Diane in Boston. She's wanted to move for many, many years and is still in the same place and not happy. Are you able to give any suggestions? Yes, I, I have good news for you. It, it is, it, you're approaching the time, and I'd like to tell you it's sooner rather than later, but it's not, um, to go. There's some, I'm going to call it, I, I don't like to use the word subconscious because there's a lot of things that, are, that happen that are not part of our conscious awareness that don't necessarily directly tie to the subconscious. I call it non-conscious. That's my shorthand. So if you wonder what I mean by that, that's what I mean. But you have some old stuff. Let's just say, I call it the, the baggies that we carry. It's ready to be released, and you have a bunch of just old patterns. They're both mental, emotional. Some of them are spiritual, but just old things that no longer serve you being who you are now. And I call it the stuff closet routine. You can open the closet, but it's so stuffed nothing falls out, although it's ready to fall out. And what you are in the process of doing, what your higher guidance and the universe specifically is doing for you, and that's that mechanism, it's the capital U universe, is helping you to Clean out your closets. Get rid of stuff. Get rid of old patterns so that you can make space in your life for the move. And it looks like um, what they're showing me, the life plan, and they're giving me a very abbreviated look at it for you. It could happen sooner, but it looks like about a year or so from now. And that will be the time. And what's really important is that you really do work on this. Just set your intention to say, listen, I'm ready to let go of all those patterns, behaviors, relationships, what, not necessarily relationships so much, that will naturally happen, but all those things that are no longer serving me so that I can be ready to move. If she does that, just do it intuitively, visually, however you do it. Use your feelings as we did in the beginning of this um, program. It will work. Um, it, but it, it does look like it, you have a little bit longer in being in this situation, but it is, it is part of your life plan to move and be ready because when it happens, I think it's gonna, it could happen rather rapidly for you. We do have another one that just popped in. Do we have time for that one? 
Sure, absolutely. That's why we're here. Okay, we've got Cheryl in Ontario. She's asking for help on how to overcome an insurmountable or seemingly insurmountable amount of anxiety and fear. Well, yes. Okay, I have this on a couple different levels for you. Um, Here's the first thing. Um, One of the things our higher guidance told us years ago, and this is for her, so I'm sharing it with you, just one of those things, is that higher guidance told us to say, it wasn't like ignore the news. Be aware of what's going on in the world, but don't be get caught up in it. In other words, be in the world, but not of it. Focus on her own connection, you know, and she can do that through meditation. Uh, we have them, again, we, there's plenty of places out there on the Internet, plenty of resources. We have them out, meditations out there. Use whichever one you're guided to to help you let go of things and recenter because the world will have us live in fear. They, they, this is, news places do it. They don't just give you the news headlines. They give you the news headlines with a twist to add that element of fear or shock to it. And governments love to do that. I don't care which government it is. All governments do this. It's just part of, part of their mechanism, I guess. That's just it's what they do. Anyway, you're feeling that energy of the anxiety of the soul group. You're, you're, this is a low self, and just be aware of it that um, you can get through this. So first things, let go of those things and and, and let it just focus on what you can do. What are the things happening in my life? What do I need to deal with and do with those? Be aware of what's happening out there in case somebody says, you know, if you live in a flood zone, hey, flooding's coming. Okay, I I need to go pack my stuff and put it up in the attic or something. But uh, do the practical things. Meditate. Um, Find people. and, and, And what the other thing is is associate with people and groups out on the Internet and in your life to the degree you can, because sometimes we control some of these things and can't control other parts of it, um, that are positively focused and usually spiritually focused, but at the very least positively focused. Um, and the next thing is is that, and this has to do on, on the more your own level, part of your life pattern and, and your life plan, they're showing that your high self and your guides are showing this to me, it's for you to let this go. This is why it's, you're being inundated with it. Um, that it is time, and you can use it, let it go by doing what we just said, which is focusing on your own spiritual connection, what are the things happening in our own life, and then just um, let everything else, I say ignore it, but that the world's problems are the world's, our issues are ours. And when we do that, all of a sudden we find out, hold on, there there really isn't all that much wrong. And we have some challenges, everyone does, but you find out the 10 things that we thought were this huge for certain insurmountable things, we've got two things or three things that are challenges that we can deal with either in short order or over a period of time, but we can handle them. But it is for her to let these things go. This has been of a pattern for her for lifetimes. It's not new. Um, and, and I'm going to share one more thing, and it's a pattern I've seen lots of times with people that come and ask for, for help, and I've just seen this over and over and over again. Oftentimes, <clears throat> it doesn't always happen this way, but let's say, for example, someone comes into this life with an anger issue. It's unresolved anger from previous lifetimes. Um, if we haven't learned it the easy way in previous lifetimes, what happens is they put us in a situation into a family where anger is prevalent. The very thing we need to deal with is the very thing that exists in that family and that does that so that it's in our face, kind of so to speak. This has come up, and then we have two choices. We can either continue that and become following the pattern of our family, or we say, you know what, this is what mom and dad here are doing is not for me, and I'm going to change, and I'm going to choose a new direction. This is the universe putting this in your face, so to speak, if I put it bluntly, so that you can let it go and live your own life. And you have a wonderful divine connection. It's beautiful. It has wonderful things waiting for you. It does. But what your higher guidance, your high self and your guides are telling me is that because of the, of the fact that you you're, end up being so focused on this out there and bringing it into your own life, that you're unable to see it. So, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Start with the meditation. Start with focusing on your own things to the degree you can. Be informed but not involved with what's happening in the world. 
and the world will take care of itself, and your life, I won't say day by day, moment by moment, but within a very short time, you're going to find where things were kind of heavy, now they're less heavy. And then as you continue doing it, they're even less, and they're lighter, and they're brighter, and you can move into that radiance that is awaiting you. So I just wanted to let you know, and your high self and the divine wants you to know, wondrous things are, you have a connection waiting for you for wondrous things. Um, just grab on to that and let the rest of it go. Yeah, and Deborah has something to share as well, because she's, uh, anyway, here she is. Yes, I'd, I'd like to also say that um, do things that bring you joy. Yes. Really focus on what brings you happiness and joy and fulfillment. And when we start feeling that self-love and feeling like we're being um, out there doing the things we love, the fear will automatically start going away. And also, um, I don't know if you enjoy listening to music, but sound, not just music, music, but, but meditative-type sound, shower-type um, programs um, like the crystal bowls and those type of musical instruments really um, help dispel all of those negative emotions and gets rid of it and clears your energetic body, your emotional body, your physical body, all your chakras. And so by listening to sound um, music, it really helps um, heal the body and get rid of all this emotional tension that we're carrying in the body, and we don't even know what's happening. So um, as you continue to... Um, Find joy in the, your day-to-day -day activities. Things will start getting better for you. Thank you, Deborah. She actually handed the phone to her right away. That's a very practical. Um, but both are kind of the same thing. Bring, do the things, focus on things that bring you joy, and let go of the things that do not, especially those that we have no control over. Now, I know we're getting close to near the end of the program here. So I'm, I won't be able to wrap up on Jahari's windows other than I'm going to list the other, the other two windows, which are things we know about ourselves that others are not aware of. And we talked about that. And then window four, things that neither we nor others know about, and that's our Achilles heel. And that's where the blind spots hit. And that's where really staying the course, being centered, not getting overly involved in the events of the world can really be helpful in allowing us to stay our course and not... Um, step into the ditch, so to speak, uh, in our spiritual life and in our regular life. And with that, I'm going to let Deborah talk about the next upcoming program. Is there any more emails? If there are, we might be able to take one real quick. Uh, we're like two minutes from the top, so we better hand okay, it over well, to you. Okay, well, at that point, <laughs> I'm going to hand this off to Deborah. I apologize for not being able to, to get through everything here, but... Thank you all for calling in. It is such a privilege to help others. Deborah and I, this is our life's mission, is helping others. So whether you call or email, it's fine. And here's Deborah with next month's programming. All right. So this is kind of a follow-on what, what I recommended for the, for the um, previous lady. Um, we're going to be talking about the power of sound and sound energy. The transformative power of sound and sound energy cannot be overstated. Through the healing and mystical energies of sound and music, our beings are renewed, made fresh through our connection to our divine essence. So I'll be talking about chakras. I'll be talking about um, emotional, our different uh, bodies, our emotional body, physical body, mental body, and spiritual bodies, and how sound can help clear, align, and um, balance all of those bodies. And when we're in, in alignment and balance, our life flows more easily and more um, gently. When we have blocks in our energetic bodies, when we're holding on to emotional things, things in our life do not flow. Music, sound specifically, really helps to clear all that so that we are able to receive the energies and the information from our high, higher guidance and then be able to live our life in the world centered, balanced, and flowing with all the energies that are happening. So that's what we're going to be talking about next month. So join us, and it will be a short um, sound shower as well. So I'll be pre-recording something. So we hope that you will join us, and we thank you for listening to us today, and blessings, light, and love to you all. This is David, blessings, light, and love as well, and namaste until next month. 
Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Hear all of our previously aired broadcasts of News for the Soul online at newsforthesoul.com. Now let's get back to the show.